Hi, welcome back to Family and Fit, where we talk fitness and how to integrate it in your busy lifestyle. So today, we're going to be doing the Theory Series. If you haven't came across the Theory Series yet, essentially what we do is we talk about controversial topics in fitness and go over some of the concepts and some of the theories along these ideas, hence the Theory Series. So for today's episode, what we'll be going over is shocker exercises and doing partial reps in exercises. So I have some examples of, of these exercises that I'm going to demonstrate, and I'll show you all those here in a few minutes. So let's kind of talk about what the shocker exercises are and partial rep exercises are. Uh, they kind of have the same concept of why you go about doing them, but a lot of times people just throw them out and they completely neglect doing them whatsoever. And a lot of people in the fitness industry like almost frown upon it. And I think it's something that people back in the day used to do a lot of, and uh, I think it's something that's died out that sometimes it could be a great, great tool. Now, I wouldn't recommend that somebody lift like this all the time. And remember, this is the theory series, so like really none of this stuff is scientifically proven. It's all stuff that's very controversial and may not really have any factual basis to it. Uh, a lot of it's just like intuitive thought. So the purpose of these exercises is to alter the resistance curve. And if you don't know what the resistance curve is, essentially a resistance curve is as you start to move a weight, uh, essentially, it's the it's it's harder to get an object to move than it is to keep it in motion. So as you're doing an exercise, uh, it might be harder in the very beginning of the movement. Or say, for instance, something like a bicep curl, it might be very easy at the bottom and very easy at the top, but in the center, it's uh, at its hardest point. Well, there's things that you can do to manipulate that uh, curve. And say, for instance, in a bicep curl, you're getting the primary work being done on the muscle is being done in the middle of the range of motion. To kind of put emphasis on some of the other exercises, uh, you would do something like these half reps to give a little bit more attention towards the bottom range of the motion and the top range of motion. And like I said, I'll show you this here in the demonstration here in a minute. The shocker reps will do uh, something similar to the partial reps but the main difference is is there's a lot more so one of the theories going along with these shocker exercises is whenever you're taking an object in motion and you're stopping the motion of it there is a, a slight instance where the force required to stop that is way higher than the force that it takes to move that same thing with being at the bottom of a movement it takes more force to get something to move than it does after it's already moving and at full speed by taking force which is mass times speed I'll put it here on the screen so mass times speed is what gives you your your force and essentially when doing these shocker exercises you're causing a lot more instances of this elevated force and you're also going to get these these shocks of extra force in different parts of the range of motion and not just at the top or the bottom of the movement depending on the workout uh, so I'm just going to quit talking I'm going to put up the demonstrations and kind of talk through the demonstrations because that way you can see what's going on and understand the workout a little bit better. All right, so we started out with the shocker exercise and we're doing tricep push downs. The main thing to note with this is that essentially you're doing the full range of motion still, but you're just doing more of a pulsated rep. So as you can see here, I started from the bottom and I'm going to the top of the movement and, uh, and allowing myself to... to go into a concentric and eccentric multiple times while the primary portion of the movement may be going towards a concentric or going or going towards an eccentric. So all of these right here are different workouts with an example of a shocker exercise or shocker set. One thing about the shocker exercises that is like hands down for sure a fact is that you will get a heck of a pump on these. Now, to be able to really implement these into a program, it'll take some time and some real training. This is quite a bit more advanced lift, but it can also be great for building a good mind-muscle connection. It's just like right here with these lat pulldowns, I noticed that it was difficult to stop and go. I could just feel my mind-muscle connection wasn't very strong. So now you're going to see that we're going to go through the same exercises again, but this time we're going to be doing the partial reps. So here we're, we're targeting the bottom of the movement, we're targeting the center of the movement, 
and then we'll allow this weight to go back up to the top and we'll target the top of the movement. So here we are targeting the top of the movement on this exercise here. So the main purpose of these partial reps are to target the range of motion that gets a lesser amount of work done to it. So here we are targeting the top of the rep again. And this can be good for, say for instance, if you're just trying to really target the chest and you notice that you're getting a really good contraction at the top. And you know, you don't have to do every variation of this. You might just do something where you only do the top or you only do the bottom. Uh, you might just want to target something that you feel like you're not, you're not getting enough volume in at. Same thing here, just starting with the top of the motion, bringing it down, doing more of the bottom of the motion, and then we go to the center of the motion. And this really is a great tool for building a mind-muscle connection. It's difficult to stop the weight, especially on the eccentric, to stop it and then go back up and then stop it and go back up. It's like you can tell the weight is just because it's momentum of going down, uh, it's just hard for you to stop it. It can be really great for getting that spike of force. So say for instance, if you're trying to break through with a bench press PR, a good way to maybe potentially break through that bench press PR is to drop down to something that's more like a five rep, uh, five rep set and do pulsated reps with it. And pulsate on the way down, pulsate on the way up. Or if you notice that you're strong enough through the entire, okay, or if you're trying to break through like a bench press PR, for example, it might be a great idea to use the pulsated reps because when you're using the pulsated reps, you're taking the, the advantage of that that spike in force that's required to stop the weight and to get the weight moving again. And then you're able to do that through the entire range of motion. This stopping and starting of the weight and having a huge uh, spike in force that's required to uh, move the weights. And essentially that's what you know strength reverts down to is having the force to be able to explode and, and to get the the weight from one place to another or through the range of motion. And so say for instance, uh, doing the partial reps may be very beneficial for if you feel like overall you're strong enough to, uh, to accomplish a new PR, but maybe you're getting stuck in this one position. Like there's this one spot that you get to and you know for sure if you break past this little spot in the rep, then you're gonna go ahead and be able to accomplish that PR. So then what you would do in that partial, that partial rep you would load the weight up to about a five rep set, and then you will go ahead and essentially just do a partial rep. Your, your range of motion for your partial rep will be about 10 inches or so, maybe eight inches, and you'll have that spot at which you think is gonna be your failure point, that will be in the center of that eight to 10 inches. So basically your, your reps will go five, four to five inches on either side of where you believe that you're gonna get stuck at, and you can train in that little area and maybe put some extra volume in towards that area right before you start to go into your main working sets for the day or at the end of your workout. You can throw them in at the end and uh, just get some extra volume in that area and just help your, your nervous system with being able to trigger and shoot through that area right there. So I wanna challenge y'all to go ahead and even though this is a theory, try this to break past your plateau and let me know in the comments below if it helped you, if you've ever done this style of lifting, it's not something that's never been done before. Uh, it's definitely been done before, and I think there are people who are smart enough to use it. Uh, it's maybe one of those secret things that people just don't like to talk about too much. But yeah, let me know if you tried this out before, if you've done this type of lifting method. Uh, and if you haven't, I challenge you to try this lifting method and see if it helps you break past plateaus and maybe just play around with it to make your workouts more fun. If you're starting to get bored with your workouts, just throw in something like this just to make it a little bit more interesting. Trick your body, you know, and, and, and maybe utilize this to uh, help build a mind-muscle connection because like I said, it's very, very difficult to do this and it's like because of that exponential force, it's like your, your muscles try to do weird things to compensate for the extra amount of force because you could be lifting 100 pounds uh, bench pressing it and by doing these pulsated moves you're having instant triggers of 
maybe 500 pounds of force. It's all because of physics. Give me some feedback on what y'all think about this type of video. Did you like it? Uh, did you like the way that I did a voiceover over the workouts that I got? Uh, let me know like what style of video you'd like to see out of this. Um, still just kind of playing around with it and just uh, seeing what all works and what just trying new things out. I really appreciate y'all watching. Make sure to hit that subular button so that way you can get notified. Oh wait, you gotta hit the bell too. You gotta hit that bell thing. And then you'll be notified whenever we post a video. So if you want to keep up with this theory series, you're going to have to hit that bell button. All right, y'all. I'll catch y'all on the next one.